Hi everyone and welcome to this six part educational series. Today we'll be covering tooth decay. To watch all of the videos before they're released on our channel, make sure to download the My Dental Care app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Let's get started. In this video, we'll be talking about tooth decay and its effective treatments. If you're here for anything in particular, feel free to skip around using the timestamps on the screen now. The simple answer is yes, but despite tooth decay being completely preventable, it is still a large problem in the UK. However, all you need are the right tools and a bit of guidance to be tooth decay free. There are a few things to look out for. The first thing you want to look at is your diet. And in general, the higher the frequency and quantity of sugary foods and drinks you intake per day, the more you are at risk of developing tooth decay. You don't need to completely eliminate sugar from your diet. However, it's about balancing it appropriately. For some great simple diet prevention tips, please watch our diet and teeth video or look at the diet and teeth section in the My Dental Care app. You should also brush your teeth for a minimum of two minutes as the last thing you do before you go to sleep and at one other time in the day. It's important that you use a good technique to ensure your toothbrush is reaching every single tooth surface. You may be missing certain areas without realizing, so feel free to watch the oral hygiene video for more details. You should be cleaning in between your teeth at least once a day, preferably before bedtime. This is to make sure that no food or dental plaque has been left stuck in between your teeth overnight. The best way to do this is using interdental brushes and if an interdental brush doesn't fit, then you should be using dental floss. Make sure that the toothpaste you buy contains fluoride as certain toothpastes don't contain fluoride unfortunately. The recommended fluoride concentration should be between 1,350 parts per million to 1,500 parts per million. And you should find this information on the back of the label. Remember to use only a pea-sized amount of paste on your toothbrush. It is also very important that you do not rinse your mouth out with water or mouthwash after you brush your teeth. Instead, you should spit out the foam and leave the toothpaste in your mouth for as long as possible. At first, this concept may seem strange. However, the fluoride in your toothpaste is fantastic for your teeth as it helps strengthen the enamel. So why would you wash away this beneficial toothpaste after only two minutes of use? It is essential to see your dentist regularly to check the health of your teeth and prevent problems from arising. By detecting tooth decay early on, we're able to treat the problem in a simple manner, meaning a better lifespan for that tooth. However, if you only attend because there's a toothache already, it means the tooth decay has developed so large it is affecting the nerve in the center of the tooth. Unfortunately, this may require more invasive and expensive dental treatment. So if you haven't seen a dentist in a while, then why not save yourself the pain, trouble and money in the long run by being proactive about your dental health care. Early detection and prevention is key to keeping your teeth and gums healthy. Tooth decay is simply the loss of tooth tissue caused by bacteria breaking down sugar from your diet which results in the production of acids. It is the production of these acids which causes the loss of tooth minerals and results in the formation of a cavity or hole in your tooth. Over time, as the cavity becomes larger, you may start to experience some symptoms such as toothache or sensitivity. The bacteria in your dental plaque have the ability to digest sugar from your diet and produce acids which cause minerals such as calcium and phosphate to be lost from the surface of the teeth. If you regularly remove these bacteria via correct tooth brushing twice a day, it reduces the risk of tooth decay. Sugar needs to be present in order for bacteria to feed upon them and cause harm. Without sugar, these bacteria cannot produce acid which results in tooth decay. This is one of the main factors that you can change to significantly help prevent getting tooth decay. This topic is very important and has an entire video dedicated to it in the teeth and diet section. Tooth decay does not occur overnight. It's a relatively long process. Every day on a tiny microscopic scale, there is a balance between minerals being lost and gained on your teeth. You can disturb this balance by frequently consuming too much sugar. Over time, this means that your tooth is breaking down faster than it is being rebuilt. So you ultimately end up with a cavity. Saliva plays such a crucial role in protecting your teeth as it can neutralize and wash away the acids produced by bacteria in your mouth. Saliva also helps balance out small levels of tooth decay which occurs on a daily basis by repairing teeth using minerals such as calcium and phosphate. This process, however, has its limitations and requires time. By consuming sugar too often, your saliva doesn't have enough time to neutralize this acid and repair your teeth so you end up having a cavity. More of this special relationship is covered in our diet and teeth video. During sleep, you have a reduced flow of saliva, which means your teeth are slightly more vulnerable to tooth decay. This is why it's important not to eat any sugary items before bedtime, as your natural defenses are down and the bacteria can attack your precious teeth for much longer. 
A tooth can be divided into upper and lower section. The upper section is called the crown and this is the part that you can actually physically see in your mouth and is used to break down food. The lower region which lies below the gums and holds your teeth into place is called the root. You can think of this similar to how trees have roots which holds them into place and provides valuable nutrients. A tooth also has different layers and we'll go through them now. The outermost layer of the crown is enamel. It is the hardest substance in the human body and is the strongest part of your tooth. It contains no nerves and 96% of it is made up of minerals which is why the structure is so strong. The remaining amount is made up of water and organic material. It is cleverly designed this way so that it can survive all the hazardous changes in your mouth. Your poor teeth go through a lot in a lifetime, from handling heavy chewing forces, to the changes in pH levels, to changes from really hot coffee to cold ice cream. These are just some of the reasons we haven't been able to make any dental materials as good as your tooth's own enamel. The next layer is called dentine, and this lies underneath your enamel layer. It also makes up the majority of the surface of your roots. The dentine layer has less mineral content, which is why it is not as strong as your enamel layer. It consists of tiny tubes which has fluid inside them. If tooth decay reaches this layer, you will need to have a filling right away. The pulp is the heart of the tooth. It is the center and it contains all the important nerves and blood vessels which keep your tooth alive. We try everything we can to protect the center from bacteria and infection. Once the bacteria gets in, it will mean the end of the living part of your tooth and you will require a root canal treatment in order to save the tooth. This aims to remove the bacteria and the infected nerve, therefore eliminating the source of the pain. This essentially saves the body and function of the tooth, but the heart will be lost forever, meaning no sensation from that tooth. Finally, we have the cementum, and this is a very thin layer which coats the surfaces of your roots. This layer connects your tooth to your gums, which helps hold your teeth in place. The gum tissue that surrounds your teeth is called the periodontal ligament. Tooth decay initially begins in your enamel layer and that's why it's given the clinical name enamel caries. At this early stage, it will be completely painless and may not necessarily require a filling to treat it. As the decay progresses, it will reach the layer beneath the enamel called dentine. Once it reaches this layer, it will start to spread sidewards and give this mushroom-like appearance on your dental x-ray. If the decay reaches this layer, you will usually need a filling straight away to stop it from spreading further. You may even start to feel some sensitivity at this stage. As the decay continues to progress, it will eventually reach the soft center of the tooth. This center is called the pulp, and it contains the nerves and the blood vessels which keep the tooth alive. Once the bacteria enter this center, it will cause a painful infection resulting in inflammation of this tissue. Over time, the bacteria will slowly start to destroy the nerve cells in the center of your tooth. This may even give you a temporary pain relief. However, the bacteria will continue to spread down the root of your tooth. If left untreated, this may result in the formation of a dental abscess, which is a collection of pus at the bottom of your tooth. Unfortunately, you cannot replace the tooth tissue which has already been lost. However, you can help to prevent further damage to the tooth. Depending on the size of the tooth decay, you may be able to successfully stop the active decaying process before cavitation, also known as the formation of a hole. This is called arrested decay. This will require changes to your diet and oral hygiene, and your dentist may wish to apply a high concentration fluoride gel on your teeth or give you a prescription for fluoride toothpaste. Fluoride treatment is very helpful in remineralizing and repairing the tooth's enamel. If the tooth decay has been detected very early on, your dentist may not need to place a filling right away, as it will cause unnecessary removal of too much healthy tooth tissue. Instead, they may just decide to monitor the tooth for changes to see if the decay will worsen over time or slow down to become arrested decay. This will require changes on your behalf, such as changes in your diet and your cleaning routine, in order for this to be successful. The advantage of using this monitoring method is that it avoids placing a filling, which will eventually fail, and it gives your tooth a chance to heal by remineralizing itself. This will require fluoride treatment and an active effort on your part by following some prevention advice and the guidance given to you by your dentist. This approach can only work if you attend regular dental checkups, as otherwise you run the risk of your tooth decay becoming significantly worse without any treatment. If the tooth decay has already reached a certain point or your dentist believes that it is likely to progress further, then you'll need a filling straight away. If you also regularly change dental practices, then this method may not work for you unless you can provide your new dental practice with a record of your previous dental x-rays of your teeth. When monitoring isn't a suitable option and your tooth requires a filling straight away before the tooth decay worsens, the aim is to remove all the infected rotten tooth tissue and place a filling material inside the tooth to seal up the hole. This will help prevent the decay from spreading further and reaching the nerve at the center of your tooth. This is why it's so crucial not to leave tooth decay unchecked as it gets worse over time, meaning you may need more invasive and costly treatment to save the tooth. 
In this scenario, the tooth decay has advanced to affect the center of the tooth where the nerve lies. Once the bacteria enters this nerve region called the pulp chamber, they can cause an infection which can be very painful. Your dentist will need to remove the infected nerve tissue with these harmful bacteria, clean your root canal system out, and place a good seal to prevent any more bacteria from re-entering and causing harm. After a root canal treatment, your tooth is more prone to fracturing, which is why your dentist will usually recommend placement of some type of crown or cap. This will help significantly reduce the risk of your tooth fracturing, as well as provide a better seal to prevent further reinfection of the root canal system. Regrettably, if the decay is very large and you have lost so much tooth tissue that with all the dental tools we have, we still can't restore it. In this case, that tooth will usually need to be removed. However, please go see your dentist way before this decay reaches that point. An extraction can also be a suitable alternative if you don't want to have a root canal treatment carried out. So that's everything you need to know about tooth decay. We hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please feel free to check out other videos in the My Dental Care app or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. See you.